Hello friends, today we will talk about a new concept called the convergence in probability. This is one of the most important topics in probability and statistics and from now on we will talk about different modes of convergence. Con uh, we have already spoken about pointwise convergence and almost sure convergence. They are nearly same and the dis difference between them I have discussed. Now this is a new type of convergence that you would not generally see in um, um, uh, real analysis. Why? Because this is not pointwise, uh, 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 point, uh, you cannot define this uh, without this probability measure. Okay? So, uh, from now on the convergences that we are going to talk about, uh, convergence in probability or convergence in law, they are defined using, a, uh, using the probability measure. Okay? Um, but in real analysis, when you have a sequence of real valued function, you can uh, mm, and talk about its pointwise and uniform convergence without requiring any measure. Now here, how, what is the idea? The idea is that the probability that xn will differ from x by any predefined quantity epsilon, that probability should get smaller and smaller as n, as n increases. So, then we say xn converges in probability to x. So, here uh, we are not saying whether xn w converges to xw. In almost sure convergence, we said that the, uh, let us collect all those w's for which xn w converges to xw. And if that set uh, has probability 1 or its complement has probability 0, then that was almost sure convergence. Here we are saying that give me any epsilon, I will measure the difference between x and x, x and, and x and look at the probability that this difference exceeds epsilon. If you know the distribution of x and minus x, then you can compute it explicitly. Anyway, that is another point. We need not know this. Uh, there are other ways of doing it. We will see. So, if this probability gets smaller um, as n is increased, and this has to be true for every epsilon, then we say that xn converges in probability to x. Now, in the same vein, you can define xn converges in probability to some constant c. If probability xn minus c is greater than epsilon, that gets smaller as n grants to infinity. See, here we are talking about the probability getting smaller and smaller as n is increased. So, I will give an example. Uh, so, here uh, let us have a sequence of random variable xn which take the value 0 and n. This example we have already seen it, right? Uh, as a, uh, 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 at, uh, this we have seen in the context of DCT where uh, uh, this example was used to emphasize the need for a dominating condition for DCT to hold. Anyway, we are going back to this example again. So, if each xn takes two values 0 and n each with probability 1 by n and 1 minus 1 by n. So, you can see as n gets larger, this probability gets smaller. Nevertheless, this is positive and this probability gets larger. Um, now, if I apply this definition to this, what will happen? So, for any epsilon, so for any epsilon, what will be probability in this case, probability mode epsilon greater than epsilon what is this probability over here so for any epsilon positive it takes only two value right so if if xn is not is positive then it has the only other value is it is zero so then it means that this is equal to zero is it clear just think about it because xn take, can take only two values. When you are saying that xn is not 0, so then this is the only other option left. So, this will then go to 0 now as n tends to infinity. So, which tends to 0. So, what is the answer? So, xn converges to what? So, in this case, xn converges to, let me see, can you think? It will be 0. Why? Because here the c is 0. You see, instead of x, we have 0 here. So, 
so this converges to zero as n tends to infinity. Now, uh, here is the important lemma that x n converges in to converges to x almost surely implies x n converges in probability, but the converse is not true. So I will uh, uh, show you how why the converse is not true. Then we will talk about why this result is true. So converge almost sure in so you have seen this point wise convergence implies almost sure convergence. In fact, point wise convergence is a, a stricter case of almost sure convergence. So the set where uh, the point wise convergence does not happen is the null set. So that is the point wise convergence. Almost sure convergence is slightly weaker in the sense that this convergence has to happen x and w has to go to x w for all w outside some set A which has probability 0. Now that set need not be an empty set that is the whole point. But now here we have defined a new type of convergence where the probability of this difference gets smaller. So almost sure convergence will imply uh, convergence in probability and uh, the converse is not true. So I will uh, that means convergence in probability does not necessarily imply almost sure convergence. So I will explain it with an example. So suppose x follows uniform distribution uh, uh, u01. So uh, now we will define a, a sequence of random variables. So we are having the same probability space everything is so I am not repeating here. So uh, I, this random variable is on a probability space and its distribution is uniform. Now xn is being defined on the same space. How that xnw is 1 if xw is less than half. So a, a x below in uniform means it takes the value between 0 and 1 with probability 1. So xw may be greater than 1 or less than 1. If it is less than 1, x1w will be 1 and 0 otherwise. Now I will define x2w just the other way around. If xw is more than half, then it will take 1. So when x1w is 0, x2w is 1 and when x2w is 0, then x1w is 1. The, so they are 1 minus the other. Now I will define x3w. How will I do that? So I will divide this interval into 4 parts. Initially I divide it into 2 parts, no? half uh, and half to 1. Now I will divide it into 4 parts. Now, for, uh, so first I will have an interval 0 to 1 by 4. So now on this I will define a random variable x3 which will take the value 1 if xw is in, in, is in this first interval 0 to 1 by 4 and a, a rest it will take the value 0. Now x4 would be you can guess probably if it is in the second interval that is 1 by 4 to half and 0 otherwise. So x5 would be if it is in the third interval that is half to 3 by 4 it is 1 and 0 otherwise and the last one x6 will be it, uh, if it is uh, sorry uh, here I, I have made a mistake it would be 3 by 4 if it is 3 by 4 to 1. Now whether you give 1 equal to 1 or not doesn't matter because x is a continuous random variable. So, so you see what is going on here. So initially I divided the interval 0, 1 into 2 equal part and depending upon whether x is less than half and more than half, I got two different random variables. Now I have divided a, this interval into um, four equal parts and um, correspondingly I have got four random variables each of which, each one of which will take a value 1 uh, for x being in one of these sub intervals and 0 otherwise. So you can see now I can go on this process. Next I can divide 8 <coughs> to cube 8 sub intervals each of length 1 by 8 and then I will get 8 random variables likewise each one of which will be taking a value 1 on an interval of length 1 by 8 and 0 elsewhere. So in this way it goes on in the nth step what will happen I will divide this in interval into 1 by 2 to the power n interval and I will get correspondingly 2 to the power n binary valued random variable that means each random variable taking the value 0 and 1. The 1 value it, each one of these random variables will take a, for x being in exactly one of the sub intervals of length 1 by 2 to the power n. 
so now so now you see how what kind of random variables are x and w's x and w's um, are a sequence of binary random variables right and if you give me any w then xw is a fixed number so now you can think xw is a number between 0 and 1 now you divide it into uh, two equal parts and check in which pocket xw is there so if xw is to the right of half then x1w is 1 x2w is 0 okay so now do you divide this uh, keeping the same xw you divide it into four parts so xw will be in one of the sub intervals so suppose xw is less than 1 by 4 then x3w will be 1 and all others will be 0 so in this way next you divide eight equal parts so, uh, so then you check for x7 x8 up to you can guess up to what uh, so i'll be adding 8 uh, um, 14 no so up to x7 to x14 so i'll have eight random variables one of them would be g uh, one and others will be zero so you see what happens is for any w whatever be the value of xw whether xw is a, a in this part or this part or xw is uh, 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 greater than half or in uh, between half to 1 by 4 and half and so on and so forth uh, whatever be the xw you will always have a sequence of x and w's which will be 0 and rest all will be 1 so you can see what will happen is that whatever be this w in the sample space x, uh, x and w will always have a subsequence that are always equal to 1 and a subsequence which are always equal to 0. So obviously this cannot converge, you know, because it has two distinct subsequences of 1, 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 0. So these two converge to 0 and 1 respectively. So you don't have a convergent subsequence. So for no w x and w can converge so there the question of almost sure or point wise convergence does not arise so this is a nice example where i have shown that i have a sequence of random variables uh, which are not converging to uh, which are not converging for any w in the sense almost surely or on in pro, uh, or sorry uh, point wise so now uh, we will show that however what happens if x1 is equal to what is the probability that x1 is equal to 1 so surely from this definition you know that this will be probability x less than half no but x is following uniform distribution that means this probability is proportional to the length that is half similarly what is x2 equal to 1 this is all this is the probability the other other pro case that is when x2 is greater than one uh, half now whether it is equal to or not doesn't matter because x is a continuous random variable. So if x2 is greater than half again that means it is between half and 1. So uniform distribution means length. So that is 1 minus half that is half. <coughs> so what about probability of x3, x4, x5, xx all being equal to 1? Well each of them is equal to 1 when xw is one of the pockets of length or sub intervals of length 1 by 4. So that so th th this will be one when probably x is between uh, zero and one by four. This will be one when x is between one by four and half. This will be one when pro probability of x is between <coughs> half and uh, three by four, and this will be when x uh, x is between uh, three by four and one. So in any case, each of these probabilities are equal to 1 by 4. Why? Because the same reason, because the x is following uniform distribution. So in this way, we can go on. Then in the next step, you, I am uh, checking what x is. x7 will be equal to 1 when xw is between 0 and 1 by 8. And x14 will be equal to 1 when x is between 7 by 8 and 1. No? So in this way, each of them will be equal to 1 by 8 because x is following uniform distribution. So in the in so see how they are increasing. I, initially, I have got two random variables, 1 and 2. Then I have got 3. Then I have got, uh, then it starts from 7. So it is 2 to the power n minus 1. And uh, uh, how many are added? 2 to the power n. 2 to the power n are added. So you multiply it by 2 simply. So that is, so these are the, each of them having probability 1 by 2 to the power n. Why? Because these probabilities are same as 
a probability of x being in one of the sub intervals of 0 to 